Hello, Jessica Frost Ballas here, and I'm so excited to be joining Scrapbook.com for their holiday inspiration series. Today I'm sharing some of my favorite Distress Oxide Ink combinations that can be used for some non-traditional holiday cards. So let's get started. I absolutely adore the Scrapbook.com domed foams for ink blending, and I use them almost exclusively for all of my ink blending these days. They blend super easily and allow me to get great blends between all sorts of colors. My first blend uses worn lipstick, abandoned coral, seedless preserves, chip sapphire, and black soot distress oxide ink. Whenever I blend, I make sure that my foam is well saturated with ink to give me the best chance at a smooth blend. I start off the paper and then blend on. I use a fairly heavy hand because I like a very vibrant blend, but you can also use a lighter hand for lighter results. My ink pads are recently re-inked and very juicy, so I'm needing to go back and forth quite a bit to get the inks to blend. I start by laying down my initial colors, making sure I have room for all of them. Then I go back and forth, blending between the colors. I keep my hand lighter on the transitions and then darken as I go back into the original color. This helps me get a smooth blend. I also pick up my panel and view it from different angles several times as I'm working to make sure that it looks smooth from all angles. And if I get ink on a different blending foam, I just blend it off onto my scrap paper until the tool is clean again. I'm also blending on a panel that's cut to 4 and 3 quarters inches by 6 inches, so that I can eventually trim off the edges to have my A2 panel. This allows me to not worry too much about the edges being too inky or smearing as I bring my tool onto the paper. I love how this blend looks a bit like a sunset, and the blend between abandoned coral and seedless preserves is one of my absolute unexpected favorites. Some of the combos I create are a little more conventional, and some definitely aren't. When I'm trying to think of new blends, I'll sometimes look up color palettes on Pinterest, or even look at favorite photos and choose a few colors that work together, and then try to match them to an ink color. There's a little bit of experimentation and definitely some failed blends, but it's worth trying to find new combinations that you love. I'm going to speed up the blending process here, but I have four more combinations that I would love to share today. The first is Tattered Rose, Festive Berries, Aged Mahogany, and Black Soot. I only recently tried Tattered Rose after owning it for ages, and I really love the shade. It's a beautiful peachy pink that can blend easily with lots of different colors. In my organization, Tattered Rose is my first shade, and Black Soot is my last, so it's kind of fun to create a blend using both of them. This might sound a little odd, but this blend reminds me of a glass Christmas ornament on a lit Christmas tree. With the reflection of the lights on the tree, you'll see all the shades of red, from the lightest pink to the darkest black. My next blend is very non-traditional for a Christmas card, but I really love it. I'm using squeezed lemonade, dried marigold, picked raspberry, and festive berries. I've seen a white fake Christmas tree decorated in these bright shades before, and always thought it would be a fun look if I lived in a beach house. Speaking of beaches, my next blend is very tropical in spirit. I'm blending Cracked Pistachio, Peacock Feathers, Mermaid Lagoon, and Blueprint Sketch to create a pretty green to blue ombre panel. And my last blend is another moody blend like my first. I'm using Speckled Egg, Peacock Feathers, Chip Sapphire, and Black Soot Distress Oxide Ink. This reminds me of a snowy winter night when the moon hits the snow and creates all sorts of aqua and blue shadows. I let my panels dry completely and then trim them down to A2 panels. With bright panels like these, I like to keep the focus on the colors and add simple sentiments and a little sparkle to finish the cards. You can also create lots of these backgrounds and keep them for when you need to create a quick card for any occasion. As you can see, these blends work equally great for Christmas or non-Christmas cards. And that's it! You can find more information on the products I used in the YouTube description below. I hope this inspires you to try out some unconventional color combinations on your holiday cards this year. 
Thanks so much for watching. Have an amazing day and happy crafting. Bye.